Leopards and tigers and bears, oh my. No, no, this isn't Oz, but our t recent trip to India seemed like a magical adventure into a world that I just couldn't imagine, couldn't, couldn't um, possibly have anticipated. And my, it's my pleasure here today to try to begin to show some of this information, some of these fantastic animals, share some of my insights with the people and the places and the environment that we saw. Let's get started. Yes, we saw tigers, we saw leopards, we saw bears, we saw all kinds of sights and scenes from the Taj Mahal to um, temples, structures, uh, forts, palaces that dated back 15, 1600s galore, some way back to um, uh, 10, 1100s, totally unbelievable country, a country that I had very little knowledge of. I was a little bit uh, concerned about going because of the unknown, fantastic trip. I'm so excited to be able to share the animals with you, some of our insights about the people, yes, that we just talked about, two, not one, but two dramatic rescues that uh, I personally engaged in. Uh, we rescued a, um, a black-headed Ibs uh, from a, a fishing snare, and we rescued a little... Um, eight, seven, eight month old puppy that was about to be eaten by a by a leopard. True story. Previews of coming attractions, they're coming up right now. But let's uh, start out with uh, some of the animals. So the leopards are very shy. Um, shy from the standpoint they're going to hunt at night. So um, since you can't get into the game areas during the, the night period, can't see them at night. Uh, secondly, you're going to find uh, early morning and late night are the only time you can see any of these animals for obvious reasons. Um, during the day, they'll come down. During the day, they'll come down into the, the lowlands to hunt. Um, they might interact with some of the local villages, might even take a cow, um, um, which turns into a management type reimbursement type problem that an educational problem that the uh, the people have to not decide to start killing leopards and tigers because of uh, the situation but they are trying to work that out and I think they've done a really pretty good job uh, of that during the day the leopards are high up in the hills the tigers are hidden in the forest um, and that's kind of the way it is. There, uh, the area that this area, area where we're seeing right now, is very few tigers in it, but a lot of leopards in it. We'll come back to the tiger area in just a few seconds. You um, you encounter because um, you're in the, out in the you're out in the middle of nowhere, and there's these little villages, and out of the middle of nowhere around the villages, people kind of walking around with stuff they've collected. Um, and most of the stuff is cattle fodder. Uh, I don't think this is firewood. This is stuff they're going to feed the cows. Um, again, floating around uh, in the middle of nowhere, um, um, uh, the little villages are rarely have uh, the temples inside them. They're, they're all kind of on the outskirts in the, in the middle of kind of nowhere, and you see um, uh, these monuments and the like. The um, farming is a, is a way of life, a staple. And as these uh, gentlemen are farming the areas, they're stirring up the insects, and this flock of cattle egrets are out there uh, helping them clean up all the insects. They're pretty remarkable. And um, uh, um, again, in the middle of nowhere, looking for the next tiger, looking for the next leopard, uh, a gentleman in this camel, maybe a flock of goats. We've got, I love the goats. The goats were just kind of terrific uh, and the like. Here's uh, this whole group of goats. I've got some video of these goats, I think. Yeah, here's our goats. Look at these guys. Just you know, we talk about goats on the hillside. Well, you got goats on the hillside here, and they're just aren't they cute? I I just was fascinated by the goats. We'd see goats and shepherds uh, almost every day. So here's a um, um, a dramatic rescue. We came across. Uh, we're sitting out here in the middle of nowhere looking at uh, a bunch of birds because the leopards hadn't shown themselves kind of late in the afternoon. We spotted this um, black-headed ibis. There's five species of, uh, four species of ibis um, that are in this area. All of them are considered sacred by the, uh, uh, by the Hindus. And um, we saw this thing in the water. We didn't pay too much attention to it at first. 
but it stayed in the same spot. It stayed in the, um, the same spot here, um, and it was in varying degrees of, of um, I look back at it and same as I thought it was fishing at first, and then two minutes later, it's still in the same spot, and I looked at it, and its feathers are all ruffled. It's supposed to look like this. This is a normal black-headed ibis. It's actually an immature where the head isn't that black. We'll see a couple more pictures of black-headed ibis. But um, uh, he's sitting around in the water. Um, just look at his feathers. They're all kind of... Um, they're wet and soggy. Uh, he hasn't been preened in a while. Um, we decided that he was stuck. And on further investigation, um, we went out and discovered that he was tangled up in this fishnet. Um, and so the guide and I uh, spent uh, 15 minutes trying to undo him from the fishnet, um, um, wrapped him up in the blanket, got him out of the area, and were able to, uh, to release him. Uh, this was a gentleman that we encountered along the way that uh, <coughs> was a local and would not have been in the problem. But the problem with rescuing the ibis was, um, this is out, actually outside of a federal game park, inside the federal game park, um, the procedure would have been go back to the ranger station, tell them there's something to this, maybe they would do something, maybe they would not. They have this big, and not necessarily bad, I guess, um, um, policy of non-intervention. Uh, they don't mess around with the animals. They don't try to do this. They don't try to do that. They are trying to <coughs> obviously manage the tigers. They've done a very good job of getting the tiger population to go back up. But... Um, Trying to rescue an ibis is basically not in part of the agenda. So, um, but when you're sitting there looking at one floundering about ready to die and drown because he's trapped in the thing, not uh, not something that we were too uh, comfortable with doing. So, um, the guide acquiesced to us going out and um, rescuing the ibis. He was actually in favor of that, but we were spo not supposed to tell anybody. So, don't tell anybody we rescued this ibis. Chipmunk, ground squirrel. There are. Five line ground squirrels. There are five line ground squirrels and three line ground squirrels. And you count the number of lines. We actually, they were common in one, in the central portion. The three lines were in one and the five lines in the other. We actually saw both of them. Um, but um, they're very cute. Uh, Willie Stork um, got some good bird pictures, not too many others. Um, again, the. Um, um, some of the scenery and the like, these, these structures just are very, very, very dramatic. Um, and then in the middle of nowhere, um, um, these, um, these are lang um, langur monkeys, black-faced langur monkeys. There's four subspecies of these. Don't ask me which one it is. The guide told me. I didn't write it down clearly. Um, very, um, they're not aggressive, very... Um, very common, very popular. Um, interestingly enough, very important in being able to see these tigers, which I'll exp uh, explain uh, later. Um, and the various uh, activities, this woman is carrying this. I have no idea what that weighs, but you couldn't get me to pick it up, let alone get it on top of my head. These are packages that she's taking to a, uh, a temple that are going to be used in part of their uh, ceremonies uh, and the like. Um, we were there during one of their big festivals, their New Year festival, and this was part of that activity. Um, many, many owls that we saw. These little fellows are very cute, very colorful. Uh, most of the time they were still so you could get a good picture of them. Uh, we really appreciated that. Um, um, this is back in one of the cities. This is a, re um, a restored garden from... Uh, uh, 5,000, uh, uh, the area of 1,500, 1,600 uh, um, uh, when, the, um, when the Muslims had invaded Taj Mahal from a distance. Um, this is a flame of the forest uh, tree everywhere, very colorful this time of the year, uh, very, very important to the ecosystem. The, uh, the monkeys would eat them, the tigers, uh, not the tigers, the, but the birds would be eating them. The, uh, the bats, uh, the fruit-eating bats would be eating them. Um, I think this is a, um, when we were in, I think, uh, uh, Jaipur, was it Udapur? Uh, there's a huge uh, man-made lake by one of the, um, by one of the kings. Uh, uh, um, 
it's pretty much ringed by palaces. The um, um, some we toured some of the palaces and some of the forts. Very colorful, amazing how well it's restored and replenished. I couldn't uh, believe how many structures uh, that survived all the way back to uh, some materials. Um, the 1100, uh, 1032, uh, they dated some of the materials back to that we saw. But the, the palaces, the castles, the, um, um, those types of structures were um, back in the 1500s, 1600s, just totally amazing. Just totally amazing. Um, again, back out in the, um, um, into the wilderness, into the, the game parks, a gentleman just kind of shows up. This guy didn't have any uh, um, 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 herd or anything with him. He was just kind of walking along, just kind of walking along. Here we have a buffalo um, and a egret, and the egret is picking ticks off of the off of the um, off of the uh, off of the buffalo. And so we see. Um, I thought this was just fantastic, and this this bird was running around the back of it and the front of it and both sides of it, and whenever he grabs something, he's got an insect or something. Um, apparently, they got a lot of ticks, and um, the um, the symbiotic relationship between I'm getting rid of my ticks, and I don't have to worry about uh, anything else, and this little bird's going to take care of me. I think that was uh, just uh, fantastic. Um, this is a uh, an adult. Forgive me, I forgot the names in this owl. Uh, and here's a baby in the same hillside. These guys were like 60 yards away. The uh, photography was really pretty tough, but uh, particularly with kind of poor lighting. But you can see that the the, the adult before had uh, the adult before had these ears, uh, the little feather tuft. They're not real ears, but they look like ears because they're feathers and the like. Um, but the um, um, but the baby um, had the little down feathers on it uh, uh, in the light. This is the new guy or the blue bull. It's the world's, at least India's largest antelope. This thing's about the size of a, um, of a small, well, a, kind of a pony. I mean, very, very big. Favorite, uh, favorite dinner for these big cats, I might add. They were very handsome. They're uh, they're in the Bobidi family. They're in the the, the cow family. Um, these are um, uh, actually domestic pigs that were um, running around the street uh, um, near one of the villages. Very similar to the um, uh, to the wild boars, except the wild. You can tell them the wild boars are basically only one dark color, but the wild boars have a different hair pattern on their on their tails. Um, I was e extremely um, continually impressed, I think, by the amount of camouflage that you would see uh, with these cats. Um, the leopards, uh, interestingly enough, we went to see tigers and leopards. Uh, we actually saw more leopards than tigers, and everyone told us that it was harder to see tigers. The, was, the leopards were more rare and more difficult to see. And we were just just fortunate and just blessed by our ability to see them. Uh, sometimes, uh, rarely up close, but one time uh, within 10, 15 meters of the um, uh, of the truck. Uh, another time, uh, most of the time, um, fairly high up in the hills, difficult to see. Um, and then here in um, uh, in this. Um, um, a habitat. Uh, this guy was fairly close, maybe 30, 35 yards away. Um, but just look at the uh, just look at the camouflage. Uh, uh, if, if you think about, we'll see the couple hillsides where these things are on uh, uh, in a few minutes. But uh, continually, everybody was saying, uh, um, not everybody, but Diane, the, the guy would say, "Look, look, look!" And I said, "I see it, I see it." And I said, "Where is it? Where is it? Where is it?" I'm looking straight at it. And I still had absolutely no clue about where it was or, or, or the like. This guy was fairly far away, um, but just kind of sitting here, very difficult. 
to hold the camera still sometimes, uh, particularly when they, the guy was trying to move around uh, um, uh, and the like. But you can have some appreciation for, um, they'll just kind of sit there and stare. I mean, this guy is so far away, he can't really be staring at us, but he looks um, um, like he's kind of staring at us, uh, does, he, does he not? Maybe I have to yawn. Maybe I have to um Interestingly enough, when they yawn like that, the guy I'm thinking they want to take a nap and the guide said be be prepared because they um are more likely to want to get up and move. Um so when they start yawning, he said be really be, be prepared with your camera and the like. And you can kind of see kind of right there a yawn and his back leg motions, he twitched a little bit, kind of maybe interested in doing something. Um, I think he's going to yawn one more time here again before the, um, uh, before he actually gets up and tries to do something. A little more light this time. Uh, very handsome animals. Very, just unbelievably handsome. Just couldn't get enough of them. This gal was really pretty active. A lot of birds uh, when you got near any of the bodies of water. Another owl up in the tree. And then there's this gentleman with his camel um, kind of sitting out in the middle of nowhere. And some of them had goats. This guy was off doing something. Um, cattle egret uh, posing for us uh, right here. Um, kingfisher, white-throated kingfisher. Um, interesting shot of... Um, up in the distance on the hillside, looking back down. This is one of the tented camps that we stayed in. Uh, horses. Horses. These horses are Mawarian horses. They're a rare breed of horse um, in the region of India called Jopper, which is the general area where we were at. Um, they're closely related to some other rare breed, the Kalahari breed, or the Kal I can't pronounce that either. Um, the, um, they were used extensively um, uh, throughout the ages for, uh, on the farms. They were used uh, uh, in the wars for, and, and in battle. Uh, but they got this distinctive, look at their ears. Their ears go up and then their ears go up and then they, they, um, they clump in. Um, just amazing little creatures. Uh, uh, you can see they're not, they're generally kind of average size. They don't consider them, <coughs> excuse me, huge like a draft horse, but they were very, very interesting. And um, um, this one area, this one resort that, uh, this one camp that we stayed at, actually um, you could um, rent them and ride them at, if uh, that uh, was certainly an option. Bee eaters. Bee eaters. This is a little bee eater, and you'll notice that he's got a bee in his mouth. These I love bee eaters. Uh, they're, and bee eaters are not native to our continent. They are native to Africa and the subcontinent in Asia <coughs> and in Eurasia. And you can see um, what they do is they 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 zoom around like flycatchers. They go grab one in the air or they grab one that's on the ground, and in so doing, they catch it. And um, take the bee and smash it on a branch until it stings the branch and it's no longer venomous. And then they swallow it and they munch. Then they munch uh, down on it and the like. Um, these are <coughs> lapwings. Lapwings uh, are very very common. They're, they're the, the, the um, plover shorebird type family. A 
Oh, I wonder if wonder if I can get some sound out of that. You heard this call all the time. They were on the plains, they were near the water, they were in open fields. Very handsome, very attractive, very striking little birds. Dragonflies. They were kind of everywhere. had a really cool video of the bag and drive, but I can't find it right now. So if I find it later, I'll, I'll pop it back up here. We'll get back to the tigers here in just a second. More of the owls, the, down, the little down owls without the... And then this leopard sitting up here on the hillside again. He's kind of stretching. She's going to think about jumping up on this ridge here in a second. And when she jumps up on this ridge, she's going to disappear. I don't have it on video. I, I'm, I missed my golden opportunity. She jumped. The, I tried to track her, and she went behind the rock, and then she's so far away, and the visual field of the camera was so small that she came up on top, and I kind of missed her landing on the top. But I finally got something that you're going to be really, 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 really surprised at. because she, she comes up with a mongoose in her mouth. Just totally unbelievable that she snatched it, went up there and jumped up there and snatched a mongoose um, right before our very eyes, so to speak. The guides said they've never seen anything like that in the last however long that they've ever, ever been there before. This is, she was just thinking about jumping there and then she went up and jumped and she ended up with a mongoose in her mouth here. Isn't that incredible? I just, I'm, I'm just totally amazed. She stood up there for maybe, um, oh, 20, 40 seconds. Uh, before she disappeared uh, behind the rock and out of our sight. There's a big yawn. Another flock of goats here. So the cities, the cities were just unbelievable. Just um, the, the little villages uh, with the dirt roads uh, um, and all the friendly people. And then you got... Uh, to these downtown areas. Um, we were there serendipitously during the New Year Festival, which is actually a nine-day festival. Um, and so we were actually, uh, the opening day, uh, we were in, I think we were in Utapar during that, uh, that, that day, and there was this big festival uh, that you can see some of the pageantry here for. Streets are just were jammed. Uh, it's kind of like the Rose Parade. So outside the city is this huge, big red fort. Um, dating back to the 15 1600s and as you can see it's not like one little crumbled piece is there the whole darn thing is still pretty much there very impressive here we are in the in the king's dining room 
And as you may or may not uh, know about Indian tech, uh, uh, techniques, um, uh, traditions, uh, you, you, you eat on the floor reclined uh, with little table type things in front of you. And so they had a, um, a reclining type area where we uh, decided to take advantage of that and, um, and get a picture of ourselves. Um, here we have um, um, another deer, another owl. And here's the, uh, the blue bowl in the water. She's basically getting algae and uh, plant grass, material. No, um, they're herbivores, of course, so um, she's looking for this and Diane saw a crocodile in the water nearby. I don't know if she was too big for the crocodile or whether or not, um, oh, I have no idea, but that's. The, um, the reflections were uh, really impressive when you stopped and had a chance to really um, um, look at the uh, whole environment and the like. We were able to, we were blessed by a number of times where you could look at, sit back and you're looking at the animal, and all of a sudden you see, wow, look at their reflection in the water. Um, uh, this bird's in the crow magpie family. I think it's um, very common, very vocal, um, very interested in, in participating in things. Um, another one of these little squirrels found uh, something to eat and sitting up here on the little branch in the sunlight. Um, here's one of the wild boars in the water. Another kingfisher, very, very, very colorful. Um, some parakeets. We've got um, the rear end of a um, of a peacock, and then the front end of a peacock. The peacock is the national bird of India, um, and as you know, it's distributed widely uh, as a ornamental type thing around here. But uh, um, I was just fascinated by. One, how pretty they were when they're displaying their, let's pause him for a second. They're displaying to attract a girl, and if you've got two or three of the guys around, the, what, the girl gets to choose between whoever um, looks the prettiest. No, not looks the prettiest. They all look pretty. Whoever wiggles their tail the cutest, I guess, is probably the, the best description. So you can see his little... Um, a little rear end wiggling around here. They're very, very cute. Spotted deer decided to just walk behind uh, uh, very casually and the like. Sloth bears. Here we have a sloth bear. Before we do sloth bears, please don't forget to like the video, and if you haven't already, subscribe. I really appreciate it because it will help others enjoy this video and uh, get more out of it just like you are. Thanks. Sloth bears. Sloth, look at this little guy rubbing, his, um, rubbing up against the tree tree. Um, sloth bears are really, 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 really interesting to me um, for a whole bunch of reasons. The, um, we had been to four game parks and hadn't seen a sloth bear. We were told they're very rare. And we were, I was already um, resigned to the fact that we weren't ever, ever, ever going to see a sloth bear. 
Um, I started looking at it in the guidebooks and how what they did, and they were insectivorous, and they had this big snout like a sloth. That's what they're they're true bears, just like the American black bear and the American grizzly bear and the panda bear. They're true bears. So, um, but they got a their shape. They're, they got a snout with a <laughs> suction type apparatus and an upper lip that can actually is mobile is, is controllable. Go, goes over their nose so they can stick their snout into a termite mound and vacuum out termites. Kind of fantastic. Uh, and they got k- big digging claws, more ex- exaggerated than, you know, if you've ever seen a bear claw, they're pretty impressive and pretty scary. Um, um, so the, the sloth bear is no exception to that. Um, the sloth bear, the sloth bear... Um, this is my commercial for World Sloth Bear Day. I'm going to do another video in, on October the 12th. But um, the sloth bear is, have you ever heard of dancing bears? Um, the, the sad and short story is um, dancing bears don't dance for fun. They dance because of bad animal husbandry practices, i.e. torture. Um, and they were popular to entertain the kings and a few other things. Um, you can still see dancing bears in various parts of India and the world today. Um, not as big attractions, but as small type attractions. And they're basically um, operated by small entrepreneurs to feed their families. Um, this organization... Um, created Sloth Bear Rescue. In 1979, the government created the Animal Protection Act for all the animals in India, primarily focused at the lions, let's strike that, st- primarily focused at the tigers and the, uh, and the leopards, but the sloth bears and the sacred ibes and all of this came under the, the auspices of that. Um, it took the government and the in, and the world and the industry a time to start enforcing it and doing this and that because the tigers the tigers were at the top of the list, but the sloth bears um, now um, are being rescued and rehabilitated, and this organization is just doing just a fantastic job at um, at at trying to. Um, um, protect them, so to speak. So what they did, very, very interesting. Um, it's illegal to have a sloth bear um, and torture it. Um, so they went to the owners and said, hey, you're breaking the law. Sign here. We won't prosecute you. They did. So what would, what would happen if um, 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 you were a car mechanic and they made car mechanic and, um, illegal and you <coughs> Um, but everybody still had cars, so what would you do? You go out underground and get another sloth bear and kill its mother and get and take the cubs and do it all over again, because you had to feed your family. So what they did was they started training the family and training the ladies and training the men to um, and do crafts to make um, um, items for sale, and that way they could support the family. So they got the um, the families involved in free enterprise and making um, crafts so that the bears would be protected. And they've uh, got the bears in, and they've got 20, they've got 30-some-odd bears here that, uh, um, that they're rescuing. Just amazing. Just totally amazing. So here's a, here's a sloth bear. Here's a sloth bear that came up and just kind of rolled up what a his, show. Uh, um, a tree and started itching and scratching himself. That was... Um, That's one way to scratch your back. The, um, like I said, that was, we were resigned to, being, um, to not being able to... We were resigned and not being able to see sloth bears, and we saw them five different times, five different times in the, the last park that we were at. Those when um, I go now, this, this, he's, she's kind of hidden in the light, but watch the lower right-hand part of the screen, the upper, up, upstage. The babies are running towards her. Come running out towards her. She's now looking at us. Did you see two babies? Yeah, I saw two babies run towards her. One is popping out from the, under the... 
So they're going to climb up on her back here. And um, she's going to turn around and they're going to actually face us. It's kind of unbelievable. Now, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but part of the challenge and difference in these game parks between here and Africa is, one, in Africa, you couldn't, you could drive anywhere you wanted. Um, and two, you could stay until dark and then get the heck out of there because darkness doesn't bode well for photography. Um, but look at these little guys. They're sitting on her back, just kind of cute as little buttons. The second problem is you go into the game parks in India um, and you have a, a permit, which is okay, but a time limit, which is kind of difficult. We're 30 minutes from the gate and our time limit is coming up to being 30 minutes from the gate and we got to get back and the guide's saying we got to go, we got to go, we got to go and so we're going to have to leave and that's part of the things that you have to deal with when, when, you're, in, when you're in India with the, um, with the game park situation but we were just totally um, enamored by mom sitting here foraging, the babies are sitting around here and um, so, a replay of, uh, of this uh, girl uh, scratching her back on the post. Uh, we're going to have to um, call it quits for today. Uh, the tigers are going to be in the next video, which I'll have up in a few days or as soon as I can. Um, I've got some footage of tigers uh, walking straight towards you and the like that I hope to be able to share with you. That's all for today. We'll show that the, we'll be able to get into the Tigers uh, with our next video. Uh, thanks for watching. If you haven't had a chance, hit the like button, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.